Welcome to Wise Beyond Bitcoin. I'll be your host today, Jacob. And today I've got a bunch of crypto neo for you, our news, education, and opportunities. Just as a quick disclaimer, nothing here is financial advice. Nothing here is advice of any kind. It's for educational purposes only. Don't think of us as your lawyers, your investors, your, your anything of that nature. Now, to just get right into it, Today's going to be a bit more of a technical video. Now, don't let that scare you. We're talking about attacks and specifically phishing attacks and the one that took part on OpenSea, how that affects people, what you can do to protect yourself, and really understanding what a phishing attack is. And so just to get right into it, we're going to go ahead and just take a look at OpenSea's platform. And now they're basically the biggest NFT trading platform out there. They're, they're the biggest one, right? They're the one that everyone knows, that everyone goes to, the one that popularized things like Board Ape Yacht Club, uh, Oni Forced, um, Cool Cats, all, the, all those different NFTs and those long lists that we can give, the new Azukis. Which actually, these are... Pretty nice NFTs, not to get too off topic, but digging the anime vibes for sure, for sure. Now we'll go ahead and take this. And I'm going to do a couple things today. So we're going to go ahead and copy this wallet address and we'll save this for later. Uh, as I previously explained in other videos, Ethereum is an open public ledger. This person's wallet address, their NFTs, everything that they've collected, I, I can see that here. Like I can go through and see all of the different NFTs and things that they have. I mean, I could see that they have an ETH domain name. And part of that, in a way, is really just kind of self-doxing. And that's not necessarily to say that that's a bad thing to self-dox. Like there is value in that. But understanding that when you have a very high net worth individual, which these are 11 ETH, each one of these NFTs, and they picked them up at the low, 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 low prices. So they've got, you know, they've got a decent amount of value here. 10 ETH, 12 ETH bids on these NFTs. That's not a cheap amount. If we go to CoinGecko and pull up that price, person has multiple of these NFTs and they were very susceptible to this attack just like anybody else. And so what exactly happened with OpenSea? That's kind of the drama about what's going on right now. And there's someone I want to highlight who is a leader in this space when it comes to you know smart contracts and understanding the development side. And that's Shepard here. And just kind of a quick shout out, you know, go ahead and give them a follow. Go ahead and, you know, comment a little bit, asking some questions, figuring stuff out, because there's a little drama around this. And basically what had happened was a phishing attack. There was, um, he covered the identity of the open sea fisher. And he was talking about uh, how writing up a performance, uh, writing up uh, how I was able to break tornado cash basically a how-to for breaking and in the encryption of Tornado Cash and what exactly he did. And it's really interesting. It's super, super interesting. So for those of you who don't know, over the weekend and over last week, there was a open sea phishing attack where someone took advantage of a hole in a smart contract security for OpenSea when they were migrating new listings over there were people who may have clicked a link on a fake Twitter account, or there may have been people who clicked on um, a link that led them to Etherscan, and Etherscan had them, you know, sign the contract address. And this is all done through a MetaMask. And so when you're going through and you're signing transactions on your MetaMask, you really want to understand what that is. What is it that you're doing? You know, when you're interacting with these things, 
that is your value. That is your money. And so if you don't know what that means, if you don't know what you're signing, if you, if it seems fishy, hold off on it. So just to kind of go in a depth a little bit, you can see here all of the different links and we'll actually link this in the video description down below, but you can click here to see all of the victims, all of the NFTs that were stolen and the transactional data on the blockchain proving it all. So that's, that's actually pretty cool. And to keep it short, 254 NFTs were stolen from 39 people. So this, this is a attack that was focused on large wallets. And for those of you who haven't heard of Etherscan, just as an example, uh, we're going to go back here and we're going to take this person's address. And Etherscan is basically the hub where you could see everything. So we can see this person's value in Ethereum. We can see all the different tokens that they have, wrapped Ethereum, their NFTs, and that is public information. If I was targeting this person, you know, I might do a little reconnaissance, do a little research around what value that it is that I can take from them. And so this is something that's important to keep in mind. Really quickly, I'm just going to be right back. I have to blow my nose real quick. All right. I normally don't do that, but you know, we're all human. At least I wouldn't do that in a video normally, <laughs> but I'm going to keep it. What the hell? Uh, as I was saying, we can see this person's address. We can see their wrapped Ethereum value. We can see their total Ethereum value, all the different assets that they have. And for a lot of people, that's kind of a scary thought because you have to realize that there's others out here, developers and people who are a lot more big brain when it comes to this particular technology and they'll take advantage of the fact that they know your wallet address. So they might try to find more information about you. They might go on your Twitter. So because this person has, you know, these NFTs, all I have to do is just see if that person has a Twitter like that, or if they're using their Ethereum uh, domain name service as their Twitter name. A lot of people do that. And by doing so, I can maybe you know, make a fake OpenSea Twitter and make it copy paste, look exactly the same as the regular OpenSea Twitter, or even just making a website, for example, maybe it wouldn't be OpenSea.io, but OpenSeas.gov. Just slight differences. The domain name website is hugely important, especially when you're visiting them in the crypto space. Make sure to always bookmark things. It's why I've got so many things bookmarked throughout all my crypto tabs. So that way I can come through here and look through everything. And my crypto tabs only grow. I only have more and more tabs. And I think that's important as, as a crypto enthusiasts, it's important to set tabs aside and save them because otherwise you run the risk of visiting a phishing website. And the really only way to protect yourself is to go here either into revoke cash and you could copy and paste an address and you could see here that this person has allowed OpenSea and looks rare, a limited allowance on their Azuki NFTs, which means essentially if that smart contract was, you know, compromised, it could take those NFTs. However, that contract isn't compromised. It was a phishing contract. So if he's seen here, not OpenSea and looks rare, but a third one, which Shepard here posts this wallet address if he was to see this then you know you, you have something there you have something that can take your nfts and 
there's nothing that you could do about it other than just revoking it before someone has the chance. So it's, it's great to be proactive and use revoke.cash to check and see what allowances you have for your NFTs and your tokens. Because if you see here, unlimited allowance in OpenSea or unlimited allowances on your tokens means that any smart contract that you're interacting with can, or that you're allowing that unlimited allowance for well, they can essentially take your tokens if it was a malicious smart contract. And, you know, we're DGENs in this space. We connect to things not knowing what they are. It's important to kind of look back, you know, and see what allowances that you have in your wallet. And so we can see this person has been pretty proactive about not allowances on, you know, certain things. But on wrapped ETH, they have unlimited allowance on OpenSea and Uniswap. It's not terrible. You know, they've also got a limited allowances on two other contracts, which I don't know anything personally about. Oh, there it is. Is it bridge? Ah, it's a bridge. Okay. Makes sense. The wormhole bridge. Makes sense. So they're just using a cryptocurrency bridge and that's the allowances that they give. But this is another reason why it's important. It's so valuable to know this information, to just have a basic conceptual understanding of how this all works. And so just to kind of get into the drama. So to follow up on the last tweet, and before he released it in Cotton 4K, the Fisher had seeded the wallet for 53 days and six hours, right? And so we can see that here. They, start out, they started using a Tornado Cash Tumblr with the money one day and 16 hours ago. And we, we can see the money going in. We don't get to tell what money is coming out directly. And so this person does a little big brain, little, little couple big brain things. But if we look at this, the brand new wallet with 170 ETH on the dot getting transfers starting in one day and 15 hours ago from tornadoing the wallets. It's also interacting with another wallet that has a KYC exchange and an Ethereum name service. And so he was able to pull the Twitter identity of the attacker. Wild. <laughs> so this is, a, this is a case of, you know, people on Twitter using smart contracts, understanding the technology, you know, being what they do. They're detectives. They're <laughs> breaking everything down and, you know, hey, this is the attacker. And so maybe people can get their NFT backs. Maybe, maybe. We don't know what's going to happen or what the legal repercussions are going to be. Uh, we don't even know if there's going to be reper uh, repercussions for the attacker. However, I think... You know, since they're being publicly doxxed as the attacker of the open sea attack, that's at least going to affect them somewhat socially, maybe financially, maybe legally. And so he gets into his like, okay, why new wallet tornadoing money come and so what? So what? Blah, 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 blah. Right. Well, the timing is impeccable, especially since the only wallet interacting with a brand new wallet sent out exactly 0.33 ETH to a burner wallet that then tornadoed the money exactly 53 days and eight hours ago on the dot. And we know how long the wallet's been seeding for. So in conclusion, the hacker got ratioed, <laughs> you know, rip, sorry. And uh, for those of you saying it might be a false positive, the timing lines up one day and 16 hours ago. The new wallet starts getting big amounts of money one day and 15 hours ago. The Fisher has money come in 53 days from the tornadoing of the same wallet, sending money hours before. And it's awesome. Like the amount of detective work that went into this, the amount of knowledge that went behind this. And it's 
awesome. Like, I highly recommend you come down in the description below. We're going to link this down below and just go through it, you know, and take the time to really learn more about Etherscan, to learn more about Revoke Cache. And, you know, these are, these are things that you can, you can do. These are things that are valuable to people like you and me who are using this technology. You know, we're all DGENs here. Let's, let's be real honest. Like <laughs> when we see a hot new NFT series, we're on it. Like I'm on it on my Twitter right now. Got all these different events and things going on. Go to my Twitter homepage and, you know, all kinds of different community reminders. We're, we're all DGENs at the end of the day in this space, regardless whether we know it or accept it or not. The best thing you can do, the best thing you can do is to learn to be proactive rather than reactive. And so this is just one of those videos as a reminder, be proactive. Take charge when it comes to your security with your financial investments. This is your finances. This isn't my finances. I'm controlling my finances. This is your finances here that we're talking about. This is an opportunity for you to be able to learn more about how this technology works. Because at the end of the day, if we jump into this space with no understanding of the technology, no understanding of how things work, we're not going to succeed. You don't have famous basketball players who don't know how to play the game. You don't have famous pilots who don't know how to fly a plane. Uh, you don't have anyone who is a master at their craft not know the basic fundamentals. And so if you really do want to make an impact in this space, if you really do want to change your financial trajectory and, and make it big in this crypto space, the number one thing you can do, the number one thing you can do is to learn, is to grow, is to humble yourself and say, I don't know. I don't know what this is. I don't know what that is. But the world is filled with information out there information where you can learn, places where you can learn. I believe in your access to opportunity, and I believe that it's right here for the taking, for you, me, and anybody else to take that time. And until the next time, namaste.